Sung Jin Woo's power of continuous growth completely shook the entire world of solo leveling. The unique power caused him to go from this to this. In all seriousness, he went from a man who was struggling to survive in dungeons as the world's weakest hunter to the biggest chad in Manwa history who could make s rank hunters shiver just from looking at him. I mean, look at Bear. He was the only one who could see through Jin Woo's growth with his beast vision and he realized that he could just create his own one-man army and the world's top guild. But how did Jin Woo even gain his power to begin with? To understand that, we have to rewind when he first encountered a double dungeon in which he reawakened. However, unlike others who were blessed with immense power and gained a higher rank, he was still an E ranker when his strength was measured. So, arise my people, as 88% of you voted for us to cover this series on a weekly basis. So hit the notification bell as we dive balls deep. He said it! He said it! Now, after Jin Woo ignored a warning from the system, he was transported into a desert and was forced to survive for hours whilst being chased by dangerous monsters. Because of this near-death experience, Jin Woo decided to complete the quests that were given to him and he finally realized that he gained a unique ability that no other hunter had ever possessed. The power of continuous growth. Upon awakening, hunters are supposed to have a set power level. If you are an E rank, you will probably stay an E rank forever. In very few cases, you might be able to bump up a rank if you really work at it and get reevaluated. But realistically, that's only an option for people who are on the edge of the next rank anyway. And unlike other humans who would be stuck in that same rank even after a double awakening, Jin Wu was built different. He could keep getting stronger. He had been reborn as not a hunter, but as a player, which gave him an experience system much like an RPG. By killing monsters or completing quests, Jin Wu can raise his stats. Specifically, each level up gives him a bonus point to the core 5 stats, which are strength, vitality, agility, intelligence, and sense. He can also gain free stat points that can be put anywhere he wants by completing his daily quest of 100 push-ups, 100 sit-ups, 100 squats, and a 10 km run. Wait a second. Bruh. The man did side on his training, which proves why he can get so much stronger, am I right? Bruh. Unlike Saitama, he didn't go bold. In fact, he became hotter the more me powerful me he got. I mean, look at this nurse. Jin Wu was emanating unspoken riz. Either way though, Jin Wu had a long way to go. We see him waking up in the hospital three days after the double dungeon. And he has his magic level tested by Mr. Wu, an inspector from the National Hunter Guild. Here, Jin is found to have a magic level of 10. And Mr. Wu states that even even the lowest of E rank should have at least 70. My dude isn't just bottom rank, he is 7 times weaker than the weakest. But what he does have going for him though is that he has already experienced the worst of the worst. Nothing he comes across could possibly scare him as much as the Lord of the Double Dungeon. So in that sense, he is free to take on any challenge as he levels up. However, what does it take to go from the lowest of the low to having quite literally godly powers? Well, that's just what we are talking about today as we cover every time Jin Wu levels up throughout the series. Now look here, if you want to level up just like him and become a chad, be sure to check the link in the description so you can hook yourself up with gamer subs and begin your own training up with code ABD giving you 10% off. As for Jin Wu though, he reawakens in chapter 11 and enters an instant dungeon in the following chapter. Here, Sung Jin Wu comes across a steel fang Raikon, basically a giant red wolf with a steel jaw. Jin tries to to fight this monster off and whilst he is definitely stronger and faster as a result of his daily quest, he is still unable to kill it. However, once he finds a sword in his inventory, he manages to finally take it out, earning him his first level up and bringing him to level
level 2. There would be no time to rest though, as Jin gets swarmed by a never ending pack of wolves that just keep respawning, eventually even fighting monkeys and cats. He continued to grind here until he reached level 15 and believed himself ready to take on the dungeon boss, a massive snake king of the swamp. Tasker. By now, his sword was broken in half and nearly useless from killing all the monsters in the dungeon. And Tasker is way too fast and strong to keep up with. However, thinking back to how much he despised himself for being weak, which led to others looking down on him, Jin Wu gains his result and states that his life would be wasted if he died here. So using pure grit and resolve that every standard shonen protagonist has, Jin grabs Tasker and crushes its head with his bare hands, earning him 3 more levels. But not only that, he also gains a dagger made from the snake fangs, which has the bonus effect of inflicting paralysis. By level 18, Jin would start diversifying his stats instead of focusing on strength. He put a few points into sense and agility as well. This ends up being a life saving decision. As when he joins Dong Suk's C rank gate raid, he is able to sense that insects are about to swarm them and Dong Suk's betrayal. So even with the warning, Jin Wu and Jin Ho get sealed in the boss room of a C rank gate where they come face to face with a huge acid spitting spider. Yeah, this thing was something out of your worst nightmare. Dong Suk, however, despite being a C rank hunter, states that he wouldn't have been able to fight the boss alone. However, Jin Wu still decides to try. It is an extremely difficult fight that pushes him to his limit. But by utilizing a status recovery for a second win, he uses Kaska's fang to bleed and paralyze the opponent. Jin ultimately takes the win and earns himself three more levels, bringing us to level 21. It's something to note here is that Jin needed a full heal and weapon skills to kill this spider mommy. So I'd say at this point, despite being able to beat a C rank boss, he is still weaker than one overall, but his intellect gives him a boost. Soon after reaching level 21, Jin Wu would complete a hidden quest by doubling his daily goals for exercising and earns a key key to an S rank dungeon, the Demon Castle Gate. Here, he would come across the Gatekeeper of Hell, Sybaris. Unlike the spider, this dog was way stronger than Jin Wu. And to make matters worse, its skill is Rage, which allowed him to temporarily double its own stats and ignore all pain. Luckily, however, Jin Wu had his own trump card to play. He had recently consumed Kaska's gland, which gave him a 20% boost to his own physical damage and by making use of a well-timed status recovery, he managed to kill the hellhound and earn 4 more levels, bringing him to level 25. Shortly after this, Jin Wu enters a dungeon with some old friends, Jun He and Song Chi Yul, who both comment how he's completely changed in appearance, which is of course thanks to the leveling system. How does it feel to live my dream? <laughs> Even more difficult than Sybaris was the next opponent, Tang Tai Shi. Alright guys, these names are out of hand and uh, I'm gonna mess up these names. Please forgive me. You know how it is. It's been 10 years. In the bini, in the bininging. Now this dude was a B rank from the Hunter Association, sent to oversee things. However, he was secretly paid to kill one of the prisoners and by extension, anyone who witnesses his crimes, killing them all. Mr. Song, the C ranker, is the first to fight him and even with a buff from Ju He, he still Still can't match up to Kang. This ultimately leads to a brutal battle between Kang and Jin Wu. Again, just like Song, even with a buff from Jun He, Jin Wu is barely able to keep up with Kang. And this is made even worse when Kang uses his camouflage skill in order to gain the advantage. But by making use of bloodlust, Jin manages to freeze the B ranker long enough to stab him with Tasker's fang and apply paralysis plus bleed. 
This ultimately kills Kang and earns him the rune stone containing the camouflage skill. Jin Wu winning this battle is absolutely insane as it proves how far he's come. Just the fact of Mr. Song being no diffed by Kang is big as even though a C ranker, his swordmanship was on an S rank hunter level. So beating Kang was no small feat. Between this battle, an easy fight occurs with the Hobgoblin dungeon boss. Jin makes it up to level 27 at this point. Continuing the journey after this dungeon, Jin Ho and Jin Wu began clearing dungeons together, doing upwards of 4 entire C rank dungeons alone each day and he quickly reaches level 39, earning the critical attack and advanced dagger skills, whilst also improving his speed skill along the way. However, However, in chapter 36, Jin Wu finally reaches level 40 after clearing some dungeon monsters and earns the job change quest. When he enters the job change dungeon, he must face knights who are too sturdy for him to attack with his daggers, assassins who turn invisible, and archers and mages who attack him from range. But guess what? This is Song Ju Wu, which they are light work for him as he farms them up until he hits level 45 and enters the boss room. Here, Jin Wu fights the knight commander, Igris the Red, who absolutely bodies him. However, through some quick thinking, he manages to absorb a would-be lethal blow with his gauntlet. Igris was on a completely different level to anything. Jin Wu fought before and the only reason he even ended up winning this battle is because he tricked Igris into not using his sword or it would have been over for him. After this battle to the death, Jin Wu earned two more levels, bringing him to level 47. Now, guess what? This wasn't the true job chain quest. And Jin Wu is then thrown into a never-ending survival mission as swarms of knights and mages are sent at him. The longer he survives, the more amazing the class he earns will be. However, after fighting Igris, he is tapped out. But fear not, this is kind of like a shounen manhwa, right? Of course! So plot is here to help. Just as Jin Wu is a about to die, the timer on his daily quest expires and he is sent to the penalty zone. Here, Jin Wu can use potions to lower his fatigue and farm sand centipedes over the 4 hour penalty period in order to heal from level ups. Whilst here, Jin Wu climbs all the way to level 51 and rewards himself by buying a Night Slayer dagger from the item store. With these levels, revitalized stats and a shiny new dagger in his hand, Jin manages to return to the dungeon and clears out all the enemies, earning himself the Necromancer class as well as a promotion to Monarch of Shadows giving him the ability to raise the dead and have them fight as his shadows by using one simple word. Arise. Let's go! Yup, this moment was hype as hell, as he uses it on Igris, giving Jin Wu a humongous boost in power as he later admits that even after ranking up more, he ain't even sure if he could beat Igris when he's using his blade. Now, Sid take it away explaining the rest of the journey for him to reach level 150 and then unlimited. However, to fully understand how this new class, the Monarch of Shadows, impact his power, we jump to Jin Wu entering the red gate. A red gate is like a normal one in that it leads to a dungeon, however it is often hidden behind a blue one. The rules for a red gate mean that once the group enters, they can't leave unless the boss is defeated. Also these gates are almost always high B or A rank and lead to destinations like blazing infernos, roaring hurricanes, and in this case, a frozen tundra and it's filled with icy elves, bears, and trolls. Jin Wu went into it thinking it was just gonna be a normal C rank gate where he could witness the training and might of the White Tiger Guild. He wasn't there to fight, so Kim Chol, a A rank hunter, leads this mission. However, when the C rank dungeon becomes a red gate, the people split into two groups. Kim Chol leads the main strike force of B ranks as he leaves Jin Wu and the other C ranks behind for being dead weight. Even excluding the boss, the only one who can really deal with the monsters in the main strike force is Kim Chol. However, it's still pretty 
pretty rough. Here is where Jinwoo proves that he's already above A rank as this girl chooses to go with him instead of Kim Cho, sensing something is different about him. Jinwoo proves her to be correct as he one punches an ice bear earning a level. After clearing out all the other ice bears and taking out the leader of the elves with the help of his shadows, Jin manages to jump two more levels to 54. While he couldn't add the leader Baruka to his army, he did add two new named soldiers in Tusk, the former leader of the Ice Bears, and Iron, who was Kim Chol before being turned into a shadow. By this point, Jinwoo is easily a high A rank and even has an A rank hunter working for him as a shadow. It has only been one or maybe two months since reawakening, but we're already seeing insane growth that is only made more crazy with the inclusions of these shadows. Remember, the stronger Jinwoo becomes, the stronger the monster corpses he has access to. This means he can make even more powerful shadows, which can fight for him to kill even stronger monsters, giving him stronger shadows and you get the point. So it's not like a constant growth, but exponential growth for him. Following this, we have some off-screen leveling as he and Jinho finish clearing over a dozen c rank dungeons together. And by chapter 56, Jin had made it all the way to level 61. Now, feeling ready, Jin Wu enters the demon castle dungeon that Cerberus had been guarding. While in the demon castle, the level ups get a bit hard to follow, but Jin Wu spends just under a week here and clears more than half of the floors up to floor 75. In chapter 56, he does mention that it would normally take him nine C rank dungeons to gain a single level, but fighting demons here can give him a level every four hours. If that was true of the whole time he spends here, he would have gained about 40 levels. However, as he continues to grow, he needs more and more experience each time so it becomes a much slower process. We've all tried to complete the battle pass, right? They make it so easy to finish the early levels, but to get Peter Griffin, you gotta spend 60 goddamn levels. I just want Peter Griffin, bro. All we know for certain is that against the third major dungeon boss on level 75, Soul Shepherd Mitus, when Jin defeats him, he earns two levels. That being said, when he emerges from reaching floor 75 of the Demon Castle, he goes for a re-evaluation and is later told by the chairman of the hunter association go gun he that if the meter were capable of measuring the full range your results would have shown up as ss or sss rank however no matter how many s's are added the results still won't be an accurate measure of your power what he's saying is that s rank is actually the rank that has the biggest differences in ability compared to the other ranks because the way someone is confirmed as an s rank is when their power can't be measured by the machine so there are huge differences in this elo. At this point, there are very few other hunters who are on his level in Korea. That list probably only includes Chairman Go and Cha Hain, though Choi Jung In and Baek Yoon Suk are in the same ballpark. In chapter 69, we start following Jin Woo as he joins the Hunters Guild in an A rank guild raid. Here, he's acting as a back carrier as his rank hasn't officially been confirmed yet, so everyone still thinks he's E rank. However, things go shit very quickly as Jin Woo needs to step in and save one of the best groups of hunters in the entire country by killing a high orc who was about to game end them. In doing so, Jinwoo earns another level up. By helping this group survive the high orc attack, Jinwoo discovers that he can earn experience from his party, including his shadows, and doesn't need to do all the work himself. And if he had cleared out all the orcs alone, he would have gotten another level. Then the raid team gets trapped in the dungeon by the boss and ultimately they all get bodied by him, where Jinwoo has to come save their asses again. Meanwhile, his future wife Cha Hain walks in to see Jin annihilating the orc boss, earning two more levels and a brand new shadow named Tusk in the process. Remember, this group he is with is the strongest guild in Korea, and while they were completely destroyed, Jin Woo finishes the battle on his own, barely taking a scratch in the process. Calling him a one-man raid is a severe understatement, and he's still nowhere near his peak yet. In fact, Choi Jung In, a S rank who was known as the ultimate soldier due to his abilities to defeat a tremendous amount of monsters, he admits that he could not have cleared an A rank dungeon solo like Jin Wu did. To continue his growth, Jin Wu returns to the 76th floor of the Demon Castle and commits to clearing the final quarter of the dungeon. And as he starts progressing through the first floors, we finally get to see what his level is again, jumping all the way up to 81. By the time Jin Wu has cleared up to the 89th floor, both he and his shadows 
have received a ton of XP. He's now sitting at level 87, while both Egress and Tank rank up to the next tier of Shadow being Knight and Elite Knight, respectively. Don't get too comfortable here, though, as the next chapter, chapter 85, would see Jin Wu hitting level 90 on floor 98 and level 93 by floor 100, where he is challenged by the Demon King Baran, who rides a badass wyvern. Like Jin Wu, Baran also summons an army to fight for him. He brings out 1,000 demon knights and they clash with Jin Wu's shadow army, but ultimately it comes down to Jin versus Baran in a 1v1. Monarch of Shadow versus Monarch of White Flames. Because of the wyvern Baran was riding, Jin Wu struggles to reach him, but thanks to Iron, he finally comes face to face with the Demon King. Both are literally pushed to their absolute limits and they start trading one hit back and forth. Baran was a complete monster, as you would expect from a monarch. Jin Wu had to utilize his most powerful shadows and gank the guy, but even then, he couldn't win without the help of Isil distracting him, a demon baddie he picked up in floor 80, which gave him the opportunity to use all of the power he had left in one punch to take off Baran's head. Being victorious, he levels up to 97. From here, Jin Wu is more or less unable to find anything or anyone who can challenge him. And remember, he was on par with Korea's strongest nearly 20 levels ago. It wouldn't be until the raid on Jeju Island where Jin comes across the Black Ant that he would have to push himself again. Jeju Island had been more or less marked as a wasteland after an S-rank gate broke there and ants emerged that conquered the whole island. Since then, several S-rank raids had been conducted, but all failed as the ants had been evolving and were immensely more powerful than when they first emerged. However, before dying, the queen of the ants gave birth to one final monstrosity, the Black Ant. Basically, Merriam brought into the world of solo leveling and he is ungodly strong. For reference, Japan and Korea planned this break together by sending their greatest hunters, and among them is Goto Ryuji, leader of the Draw Sword Guild and Japan's strongest hunter. And when Jin Woo does a 1v1 with him, Goto is absolutely floored. Like, he admits he could not beat Jin Woo. Bro shits his pants. But against the ants and the other fodder guys, this dude has been swinging his meat around since we meet him and everyone says that he's the strongest around by miles hell if this raid is successful he will be marked as a nation level hunter making him one of the strongest in the world however when he takes on the black ant he is killed with literally no effort one swipe and bro is done like it's to the point where like the, the ant is annoyed because he's so weak like why are you so weak i, I thought well, i wanted to f I, we were gonna have a fight bro but how does Jin Wu do in this battle well the black ant can't beat him in any way brute strength no Nope. Uh, speed, which is actually the ant's most prominent power. Nope. And finally, numbers? I mean, maybe numbers? No, he got his whole shadow army. Numbers ain't doing shit. <laughs> Jin Wu scares the ant so much that he tries to run away. But by using the commander's touch, he slams the bug back into the ground and holds it in place as he cuts him to pieces with an upgraded version of a previous skill, Mutilate. For this, he gets two more levels that bring him to level 99. But by clearing out all the remaining ants on the island, Jin Wu finally hit level 100. Not only was Jin Wu so far beyond S rank that he could clear this entire S rank raid alone, which even Korea's strongest couldn't win against, but he also managed to arise the black ant that made all the other hunters look like an absolute joke. He is officially untouchable now and is easily comparable to the combined efforts of both Korea and Japan's best hunters. He even defeats the strongest hunter out there, who is Thomas Andre. For those of us raised on Pokemon, 100 seems like a nice round number to stop at. However, chapter 122 has us follow Jin Wu and his brand new guild, Ajin, into a dungeon. To be fair, guild might be a strong word. It's, it's, it's literally Jin Wu, Jin Ho, and his cousin padding out the numbers. He's a one-man guild, but to prove himself to the Hunters Association, he needs to have Mr. Wu accompany him on a raid. Mr. Wu is basically there to evaluate Jin Wu's performance in an A-rank gate to ensure 
it is safe for him to take on dungeons alone, and he basically wets himself seeing Jin Bu's army in action. His army allows Jin to clear monsters, mine for material, and extract gems all without lifting a single finger. And they even managed to put a horde of A-rank Nagas down. These guys are busted. However, when the dungeon boss arrives, Jin recalls all of his shadows and kills the A-rank boss in a single hit to ensure his own skills aren't getting rusty. Needless to say, Mr. Wu gives him the seal of approval to raid here. Though, when describing the situation to Chairman Go Gun He, he said that it wasn't a raid but a massacre. More importantly though, this brings Jin to level 101 and buffs all of his job specific skills. From here, we don't see Jin Wu gaining the next three levels. However, in chapter 126, as he goes to fight the architect, he mentions that he's now level 103, so our lad is still on that grind set. But sadly, defeating the architect doesn't give him any XP. How is that a dude who created the system doesn't give him any XP? That makes no sense. But, but this grind set is very important because even though he's already the strongest, you gotta keep getting stronger because a S rank gate breaks open in Japan, from which a horde of giants forced their way. By killing these monsters, as well as the gatekeeper, Jinwu manages to earn another four levels, but he probably gained more off screen. Even though the gatekeeper gave off so much experience, it was not the actual boss of the dungeon. And upon entering it, Jinwu comes across another monarch, the monarch of beginnings, Legia. Legia offers to join Jinwu to defend against an invading army of angels called the rulers. However, because he still wants to eliminate humanity, Jinwu chooses to kill him and earns eight levels, bringing him to a total of 122. At this point in the story, Jinwu gaining so many levels is insane. Cause like, remember, it takes a lot more XP now for him to actually make progress and through killing the monarch, he gets so much experience that the system has to spend time calculating. Also, he gains so many levels off screen, like right here while defeating the giants. Somehow he gains seven levels that are unaccounted for. Regardless though, Jinwu is arguably 20% stronger than he was when he killed the black ant. Forget having the power of Korea, at this point he might have the power of an entire continent's worth of hunters. As Jinwu starts becoming more of a problem, the other monarchs gather together to decide how to deal with him. With the monarch of frost, plagues, and beasts all choosing to attack him at the same time. Between killing Legia and chapter 152, Jin has managed to jump another 11 levels off screen and he's sitting at 133. The monarchs teaming up proves how built different Jinwu is as he's still a human at the end of the day. Well, at, at least he is for now. Anyways, it would be a few more chapters until the monarchs actually group up to attack him. But by the time they do, Jin has grown to level 143. And let me tell you, every one of those levels count here as the combined forces of these monarchs is absolutely devastating. The monarch of plagues can make zombies. The monarch of frost can freeze things and create ice golems. And the monarch of beasts, I mean, he's also there. He, he has like claws and like, he, he looks like a giant beast. That's pretty cool. Damn, that's crazy. Jinwu manages to kill the monarch of plagues, earning him three more levels and bringing him to his final stated level of 146. But even with these levels, he is completely tapped out on energy and the frost and beast monarchs finally manage to kill him. While Jinwu does get a second chance at life, he would never need to worry about gaining levels again. This whole system had been created and put in place to prepare Jinwu to become a vessel for Ashborn, the true monarch of shadows and upon dying, he is finally ready to inherit all of Ashborn's powers. Because of this, Jinwu no longer needs to actually level up and all of his skills and abilities are maxed out in a way befitting the king of the dead. He's quite literally a god amongst men and a truly unstoppable monster. You could say he has reached level in infinity by the end. If you guys enjoyed this, then go check out our Culling Games Explained video where we explain everything that's gonna happen in Jujutsu Kaisen Season 3.